So we just finished a multi-video example with threading, and I hope it was rather useful to see that we can take a large amount of work, and if it makes sense to break it up into uh, portions that various threads could work on, then <clears throat> let's do it. We've just won a lot there. Um, I want to recap a little bit what we did here. I have this array of... Oh, that was terrible. <laughs> I have this array of data. Okay, we actually had 500 million bytes. I treat them as integral values. Uh, I'm not going to draw 500 million <coughs> array cells here, but pretend this is 500 million. And then before I was drawing these brackets on top to show us breaking the workup, I actually decided I want to change that up a little bit. And instead what I want to do is just say, well, thread 0, we gave this portion of the array thread 1, we gave this portion of the array. We'll pretend that we only had three threads instead of uh, eight like I did on the previous videos. <coughs> so each thread was given its own portion of the array to work on. And before we even sent the, thre the threads off, we generated random numbers that we put in this array. Now I'm actually going to uh, put some numbers in here. They probably won't be very random, but numbers nonetheless that I can use to further illustrate what was going on. Seven three, two, one. Let's keep them simple. All right, so that was the alg algorithm we chose is to divide the array into roughly equal portions and let the threads go. Uh, notice I didn't do any locking during that example, and the reason why is before we started the threads, we generated all the numbers, so the data set was ready to go. We wrote to this array, array before any of the threads we're given a chance to read from them. Furthermore, we also gave each thread its own portion of the array to read from. This thread 1 didn't cross into thread 0's area, and thread 2 didn't cross into zeros, nor 1 into 2, and so on and so forth. So there's no no way that these dancing threads, quote-unquote, uh, could step on each other's toes. They each had their own portion and their own sandbox, if you would. So no thread safety issues there as well. Now, had we started the summing threads before we uh, produced all the numbers, well then we have an issue because we need all the numbers to be produced before we can sum them up. Um, that or we can do what's known as a producer-consumer model. You've pro you'll probably hear that term or have heard that term when it comes to threading. And so let me uh, try to illustrate what that is. Instead of doing this array here with all these numbers and zero adds them up, so let's see, two, one, 8 plus 2 is 10, 11, 15, 22. Remember we had that result array as well. 1 plus 2 plus 5 is 8. That is an 8, 10, 12, 13. So each thread got its result and stored it in that, whoops, that result array. Oh, that's terrible, terrible array. And then at the end we summed all these up and got, got the end value. Uh, instead of having all the data beforehand, we can do the producer-consumer model, which essentially I'm going to, take care. I'm going to say this is thread 0, thread 1, and thread 2. And then these are these threads are going to consume the data, just like we consume that array that we made up here in the code. Uh, but now we want, to, we want to produce the data on the fly. So if you would, consider this, uh, I don't know, I'm going to draw a box here that generates random numbers. It's a random number generator, sure. It's, it's a data generator. Somehow we're getting data. It could be from the hard drive, it could be from a database somewhere over the network connection, user could be typing it in, whatever. This machine here spits numbers out this direction, okay? So let me, I should actually switch to a different color. So say I tell this machine to go, and all of a sudden, all these numbers come out. 5, 6, 9, 1, 2, 4, 8, 8, 8, not very random, I know, but all these numbers come out of this, this number generating machine that we have here. Well, in, th in this scenario, what threads are going to get what numbers? We could say thread 0 grabs the first one, and thread 1 grabs the next one, and thread 2 grabs the next one. Or, or maybe thread 0 grabs the first one, but then he gets too busy adding it up, and it takes too long, and, and so thread 1 has to grab the first one, or thread 0 can grab all three. Or You know, we just have all these numbers we need to add, and we have all these threads that are willing to do it. Okay, so this this box here is generating numbers, the producer of the numbers, and, and then these threads want to consume them. And this is where the threads can step on each other's toes. Uh, set, say thread 0 goes for this number 8, and this thread 1 all <coughs> says, hey, I want to go for 8 too. Well, now we've just added 8 twice, when really we just wanted to add 8 once. Ideally, 
we have some coordination effort where one can grab, zero can grab, I don't know, these three, then one will grab uh, the four and the six, and maybe two will jump in here and grab these, but then one gets done with what he's doing, and he grabs the nine, so on and so forth like that. So <clears throat> we, we need some way of coordination where these threads don't step on each other. And, and that's the uh, that's where I'm going to take this example to next is, is basically we're going to create a, a producing thread and a, con and a bunch of consuming threads. One side note that I do want to mention is <clears throat> it may or may not make sense to have a producing thread here that can't produce enough to keep these threads busy. Remember, threads have overhead. I haven't talked too much about how much RAM they take up and their operating system level thing. So in order to create threads, we have to take time and resources out of the operating system. Um, they have their own call stacks. Then context switches. Uh, I'll talk about context switches, but essentially we have to take threads and put them on the CPU, let them run for a while, pull them off. Well, that takes time and overhead as well. So we just don't want to create threads just to create threads because it's cool. Uh, we want to create threads when it makes sense. We can make our application go faster. Or perhaps, maybe design-wise in our code, it makes sense for us to break things into threads as well. But you have to be careful. I mean, pretty much everything we do in computer science has trade-offs, and we, you need to understand the trade-offs when we create threads. If it makes sense and you got the resources, yes, do it. Uh, if it doesn't, then rethink your design and try something else. Anyway, I'm going to illustrate this example a little bit more in code in the next few videos.